Hey, welcome to Mr. News Art Class. It's wonderful to see your smiling faces. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about convergence, which means coming together. To see how that works, we're gonna go on an epic adventure together to a distant castle. Come along for the ride. We're gonna need a pencil box of some kind, a pencil pouch, and a sketchbook. Shove those into my backpack here. Can't forget my mask. Gotta protect myself from the Coronas. Let's start our illustration by sketching out the destination. That would be our epic castle that we're gonna go visit. Like we've talked about in a previous video, the focal point is often either the closest or the farthest away part of your picture. Since we want this illustration to tell the story of that journey from here to there, I'm gonna make that castle very far away. And when I do that, let's also remember the rule of thirds. We don't want our castle or our focal point to be right in the middle of the page. Let's make it a little farther over, like a third of the way in, and, and either a third of the way up or a third of the way down, not right in the middle. I'm gonna make it here. I like to place it on the right-hand side over here because the, uh, we read from left to right. So I want, since that's the end of the story, I wanna be reading from left to right. I'm putting the destination on the right, the end of the story, the end of the illustration on the right. Now, I'm not trying to get every last tiny little detail of this castle in place. I'm just trying to get the basic idea that there is a castle here. Uh, remember that this is far away, so I'm not gonna see all the tiny details, but also it's the focal point, so I do wanna see enough detail to make it, you know, worth looking at. Um, so I'm drawing some of these towers that might be there. I'm drawing like the, the gate, the castle gate, but I can always go back and add more detail later. Right now, I'm mostly worried about just getting the placement. Now let's dive into what today's lesson is all about. When we say the word convergence, what we're talking about is things that come together. In this case, we're talking about leading lines that point to the most important part of your picture. Right? So I could have my fingers pointing at my face if I want you to look at my face, or a pencil pointing at my face if I want you to look at my face. Or in the case of this illustration, what I'm gonna do is have a lot of lines that point towards that castle, and I'm gonna start with a path. I'm gonna start out pretty simple with this path, um, just sort of a curve that goes from the edge of the page towards the castle gate, uh, then another curve coming from the castle gate, but the, not like super close. I want, I want it to be a nice wide path where it's close to me. Because remember we've talked about before, things that are close to us are larger. Things that are farther away are smaller. So even that pathway where that path is right in front of me, it's wide and it gets smaller and smaller as it goes off into the distance. And notice again that path reads from left to right. So it's like we're, we're about to go on this long journey. Now, I should emphasize that I am sketching everything very lightly here. I know that I'm going to be making mistakes and needing to erase things, and I also know that I'm going to go over this with inks and colors later. So I don't, I don't want to you know, push down too hard with my pencil, make anything too dark. I know I'm going to have some things that cover up parts of this path. I know I'm going to be changing things, so I don't want to push down too hard. And before we hit the road, I'm gonna take a stop in the garden here and pick some of these herbs to help me get through the day. Maybe some of this chocolate mint will do the trick. I'm just gonna crush up a couple of these leaves, rub them together a bit, 
and then stick that down in my mask right underneath my nose. Ah, oh, so much easier to breathe when your mask smells good. All right, let's go. Okay, so we've got our destination planned out and a basic path for how we're gonna get there, but it's time to start adding in some details along that path. So I'm sketching in some bushes here, some plants here. I'm gonna make that sort of garden area and, you know, just kind of have the idea that there's, you know, a nice, fine, fun, clean, happy little gardeny type place that we're starting out in. And I'm doing that by just, you know, very quickly and loosely. I'm not, I'm, I am drawing a lot of detail, but I'm not trying to make any of that detail perfect. I'm just drawing like stems with leaves and I might add some flowers, you know, try to get that garden idea going on. And I'm, I'm, you know, letting it be like a whole bunch of stuff together. Maybe I'll have a little path through my garden that maybe leads towards that sort of open road. But remember, the goal here is to give us a start for our journey, not to fill the whole page with a garden. Notice I made that kind of small and kept it in just that one little spot right at the beginning of our journey. And our journey is off to a great start. Oh, feels good to take that mask off. It's time. You ready? You know, I was thinking though, would, would the car be the best way to travel if we want to have an epic adventure? What if we were hiking through the woods? Wouldn't that be more epic? I mean, there'd be trees, boulders, streams, bugs, not to mention that every step exerts your own energy instead of just sitting on your bum in the car. Let's make this pathway go through a forest. For starters, we'll draw in a whole bunch of trees and I need some guidelines to tell me how tall those trees should be and guess where those guidelines are gonna point. That's right! They're gonna point towards the castle. So what I'm gonna do is have a guideline. Pencil this in super light because you are gonna erase this guideline that points towards the castle down low, close to the path, but not on top of the path, not, or not inside of the path. And then another guideline that comes straight out from the castle gate and goes up. Now, this guideline is gonna be the base of my trees where the trunk goes into the dirt. This guideline is gonna be the tops of the trees up above. And so if I use these guides, notice that if I make a tree here, it's gonna be nice and tall. And then if I keep going, the trees that I make here far away are gonna be a lot smaller. Let's keep that in mind. And let's, let's make these trees nice, at least the ones that are closer up. I don't, wanna, I don't wanna just draw a lollipop tree with like a rectangle and then a bush on top. Come on guys, come on, come on guys, come on. You can, come on guys. You're better than that. No, so what I wanna do is I wanna use organic shapes. We've talked about those before, organic shapes and uh, so I want to have the, you know, the trunk have some bumpiness and bajankitiness to it, and it's also going to have branches coming off. It's going to get narrower as it goes up, and uh, there's going to be branches, and then those branches are going to have branches coming off of the branches, and then more branches coming off of the branches that come off of the branches that have branches coming off of their branches. Does that make sense? So it's just, I mean, I don't have to draw every single branch, but I should draw lots of branches. And I'm just, at this point, loosely sketching them in. It's totally fine if a bunch of them are kind of crazy and wild and weird. And I mean, it is a tree after all. And then uh, I'm gonna use that to sort of 
guide where I put this big bushy shape because remember that the leaves are going to be at the edges of the uh, branches. They're not going to be on the trunk, right? So I don't want to, you know, I don't want to have like the leaves down here, right? They, they, they wrap around the branches. Anyway, I'm going to do another tree that's going to be behind this one. So we're not going to see the whole tree, right? Because in a forest, there's lots of trees, right? Lots and lots and lots of trees. And, and they're going to be overlapping each other. So what I'm going to do here is start drawing another tree trunk. And I'm going to see a branch coming off of it here. Maybe a branch going back behind that tree where I, I can't see it. The trunk goes back behind that tree. Maybe there's some other branches coming out from behind that tree. And then... I got a tree behind a tree. I'm going to do it again and again. Notice that I'm getting less detailed as these go farther back. I'm not drawing as many branches, but they are still going from this line all the way up to that line. By doing this, even when I erase my guidelines, that line of trees points towards the castle. So, it has convergence. It's a leading line converging on that castle. And I'm going to stop there, leave a little bit of a space between, because I, I know that I'm going to want to add some other things past the uh, forest before I get to the castle. But I'm going to go ahead and erase my guides. And you can see that those trees kind of make a triangle pointing towards the castle, right? Uh-oh, it looks like the storms are coming in. Every good story has some kind of a problem that the protagonist has to overcome. Let's add some storm clouds up above this forest that, and maybe some lightning coming down in. But I don't want the whole page to be doom and gloom. I want there to be a light at the end of that tunnel, but I want there to be, you know, some scariness going on here. So I'm gonna pencil in some clouds big, big clouds overlapping each other. When I color this, this is all gonna be very gray. I'm gonna go ahead and, and just give a little hint that these clouds are gonna be gray. And I'm gonna add maybe some lightning sparking down from one of these, let's see. Yeah, that gives us a little bit of a spooky uh-oh in the middle of our story, right? We want our, our protagonist to, you know, have some, kind of a problem they have to overcome. And, uh, you know, in this case, it's, uh-oh, we're gonna have to, you know, make some shelter or some, you know, find some way to wait out the storm. Maybe we'll hide in a tree or something. I also, just because I thought it needed some more detail, I, I went back and added uh, some more tree trunks and bushy type things happening in this little forest so it wasn't just a row of trees. I think that helped a little. Now, to kind of counter the doom and gloom of this storm going on, I want to have some kind of bright, you know, excitement coming. You know, think about when a storm clears. A lot of times, you know, you, you get the clouds splitting apart and then the sunlight shining through and you see big beams of light coming down from the sky. We call those God rays because, you know, people think of it like God is shining rays of beautiful light down onto the ground from above. And well, what I want to do is kind of, you know, have there's this part of the, the sky that's kind of stormy, but then I, I over here want the sky to be bright and exciting. And I think the perfect way to do that is to continue thinking about convergence. I want lines that point to my castle 
So when I make the God rays, I'm going to put, you know, the sun kind of hiding, peeking out from behind a cloud here. And then I'm going to have these rays of light that come down from that sun towards the castle. Hmm. Wow, I did not think we would make it through those storms. It's been a long journey, but we're finally here. This entry here gives me another idea for my drawing. Let's add in a moat with either a drawbridge or some kind of a bridge going over. Yeah, yeah, so I'll edit. So I'm gonna start that about here. Give it some space so it's not right next to the castle. And I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and draw that coming directly over my pathway, my, my roadway, and I'll, I'll you know, redraw parts of that to make the bridge later. Uh, but here it's, you know, notice that this little streamy waterway here, river maybe, is getting wider as it comes towards us. But I had a great idea. I thought right here underneath the uh, castle, we need some lines that point up, don't we, towards the castle. What better way to do that than have this moat or river or whatever it is end in a waterfall that just goes down and it's going to end in a puff of, you know, steamy stuff. And then maybe, so like this could be a rocky cliff that comes towards, you know, the foreground on this side of the, the road. So like maybe the road has like a forest on that side and a rocky cliff on this side. And um, maybe there's like some boulders here by my garden that stop me uh, from falling off the cliff. So maybe like up here at my garden, I'm kind of protected by these rocks and boulders. And, uh, but, but then, and, and maybe like a little fence kind of a thing as well. Get some fence posts in there. Yeah, but then past that, there's just a rocky ravine. And I'm just kind of getting, penciling in some of those rocky cliff edges. And maybe this side of the uh, river thing just goes back behind my forest and disappears behind my forest. Now, here where the pathway and the river kind of intersect each other, I want to make a bridge so that we can, you know, actually cross that. And there's a couple of ways to do this. You could make what's called a ford where there's like, you know, just rocks that you would just walk from rock to rock to cross the, the river or stream or whatever. But I think I actually want to build a bridge. You know, there's lots of different ways to make that, but I think, you know, that's, that's a good enough little start. Ah, now would be a great time to get some rest after that long journey. I think I'll just lay back and watch the birds for a little bit. Maybe we could use some of this space in the sky up above the castle to have some birds flying in the sky. And if we do that right, if we place those in here the right way, we can use those birds to create another line of convergence. See how I've got like a V formation. You know birds a lot of times fly in a V formation. 
and that's pointing towards the castle. Oh look, I've got another thing in my picture that points at the castle. If you haven't figured it out yet, lines that point towards something create a focal point and make the viewer, the person looking at your picture, look at what those lines are pointing at. All the lines in this picture are pointing to the, not all the lines, but most of the lines in this picture are pointing at that castle. Ah, oh, that was a good rest. I needed that. I wonder what kind of adventure I'll go on next. It's just this one tiny little space left in my picture, and I've kind of already completed this whole journey to the castle, but that leaves the question of what's next? And just like I always like to end my videos with a little hint of what's next, what's going to be in the next video, I also like to end my illustrations with a little hint of what's coming in the next adventure. So I'm going to put some distant mountains way back here. There's going to be a horizon way here, and then there's going to be tall mountain peaks. Notice the ends of those mountains are pointing where? That's right, towards the castle. Okay, wow, just wow. So far, we've had an epic adventure that involved forests, storms, castles, and mountains. But at this point, everything is just a simple sketch. This is a great start with a ton of convergence, those leading lines that all point towards the focal point of the drawing, but it is nowhere close to finished. Now we've got to decide how we're going to put contrast and color and our imaginations to work. You guys know my process. I'm going to add ink and then I'm going to color. So that gets all the inking done. Now, before I add any color, I'm gonna go erase because I've got a lot of extra pencil lines and things that I didn't quite trace everything exactly and some things I left out and some things I added extra. So I'm gonna go back and just erase all the pencil lines all over the entire page. 
That's why these big pink pearl erasers come in such handy. Because if I tried to use my pencil eraser for that, it'd be gone before I got through half the page. Now, I am going to be adding some little pops of color here and there using these Polychromos colored pencils. I am not going to color the full illustration. I'm going to color a few things based on their importance within the illustration. So clearly the castle is the focal point and I want that to stand out the most. But second to that, the pathway is also important because that's really like this whole journey centers around this path towards the castle. So the path is going to be like a second most important thing. Then I'm going to have little details like the lightning probably. Maybe the water will be a little bit bluish. Maybe there will be some color in the flowers. Little pops of color here and there that just sort of add some emphasis, add some uh, interest, things like that, so that the viewer who is reading my illustration will know what points to, to stay at for a little bit and see and, and think about how those would impact the journey. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. I really, really like the way that castle turned out. Uh, I got, I, I mixed a sort of light green with a sort of blue and I also blended a little bit of white into that to make it into a sort of turquoisey looking color and I emphasized the outlines with my sharpie. Now I want the path to be a secondary focal. This will be like the main leading line so I want to draw the attention to that with some color. I'll probably use a brown there. Wow, I am super happy with how this turned out. If you like how it turned out, or if you learned something from this video, hit that thumbs up button down below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell and share this video with all your artsy friends so they can learn with you. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.